What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be giving you my review of the Ennies Lobby arc in the Water 7 Saga of One Piece. But before we get into the video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell to get notified for more content that I put out. As well, if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to hit us with a like and leave a comment and let us know your thoughts on the Ennies Lobby arc. So, without any further ado, let's, let's just get, get into, into it, it y'all. There she, 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 she. Okay. And these lobbies, how you feel? What's your what's your thoughts on the arc, and uh, what's your thoughts on the island itself? Wow. Um. I mean, it's hard to put it into words, but favorite arc by far. Um, I adored it, and I thought Water Seven was my favorite arc, but I was mistaken. Um. Little backstory. Um. For, I think I was kind of bedridden for like two to three days, so I just binged watch it, watched it, and not because I was bedridden, because I had enough energy to be up and stuff, but I just wanted to finish this arc because I was so into it. Um, I was seriously locked in. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep without knowing what was going to happen next. It was, it was so good. Um, it was intense. I really like could not stop watching, and. Oda just continued to do phenomenal connecting and world building. Um, and we, I think, in my opinion, as of now, this is the best backstory that we've gotten of a character. I still love Nami's backstory. I still love Belmare, but this Nico Robbins, I think, top that. Good take right now, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that, that says a lot coming from me because I love Belmare too, but this was, this was something. I love Annie's Lobby. So for Annie's Lobby, like, what would you say are some, you know, some high points and some low points yeah. throughout the, the arc for you? I mean, I will say, it's not what I expected at all. Um, I, for some reason, when I knew they were going to this world government jail type situation, uh, prison, um, everlasting prison, I thought we were, I literally pictured some type of prison and I thought we were going to go through and find some cool people. I thought we were going to save Tom. I thought... Oh, you thought we was gonna go in like Andy yeah. Lobby, I like. thought I thought there was there was gonna be more of what exactly you see in Annie's lobby once you pass the gates. Um, I also didn't picture the island to look like that at all with the waterfalls and the. Um, I mean, it gave us a little sneak peek at the end of Water Seven, I think. Um, but I I really didn't picture this, and so I was shocked. Um, but I wasn't disappointed at all with it. Um, so some high points, I would say. Um, so I guess it really depends on your your views of this, but this arc made me feel every type of feel. <laughs> every feel. And so if you don't like to feel feelings, this arc is not for you. If you do like to feel feelings, this is your arc. Um, I really, another high for me especially was, I really loved the little garden arc. Yeah. Um, I love dinosaurs, I love giants, so that arc always... Um, had a special place in my heart and the connection to the little garden with the giants. Um, also just other connections uh, like Spandam being the son of the person who called the buster call on Nico Robin's family in the past, or not family, the island in the past, technically family. Um, another high point, just the straw hat building and connections, um, like the, their pose on top of the tower. <laughs> Another moment. Uh, the... I, so in hindsight, since remember the beginning, like that was like the first video I had, I took of you like watching One Piece was like watching a straw hat like oh, group yeah. shot. Mm -hmm. Now you understand like when the, the, the group shot when the group shots happen, you're like, nah, it's always lit. Yeah, yeah, it was the, that moment. Um, just some of the the phrases, the the catch lines in this arc. Now I understand them more too. Um, the shooting down of the government flag was so symbolic there was there's so many high points i don't know if i can really list them all yeah um let me look at my notes i guess some of the low i mean a low maybe um even though it was pretty phenomenal and i think the action was well thought out i i've been feeling like this and it might just be watching the the anime. Yeah, watching the anime, not reading it. The fighting is still a little slow, but not, this this arc, it was still so captivating because yeah. I think, we'll talk about it a little bit more as we go on, but the, the pairings 
um, of the people fighting were amazing and well thought out, but the fighting was still kind of slow. I think uh, that also goes to like your taste and things, though. You don't really like fights. No. You don't like seeing violence. It seems like you, you've get you've gotten more driven by like these story moments outside Absolutely. of the fights of One Piece so far. Yes. Yeah. I I still appreciate the fights because you get to see new strengths, especially in this arc. We got to see new strengths, but yeah. the the fighting was a little slow for me. I think that might be the only low that I have. Um. And this is kind of a low and a high, I would say, but there was a lot of vulnerability that was seen um, in amongst the Straw Hats. Some examples are, I mean, we saw Sanji when he was put up against a woman. We learned yeah. that he will never hit a woman. Um, I mean, you knew before, but like they really... But the, he <laughs> turned into soap, so... <laughs> uh, and he he was so vulnerable, he, he would not go against her, so he turned into soap. Uh, such an interesting power. Um, Robin versus Buster Call. We we saw her get truly triggered. Um, that was a lot to take in as well. We saw her so vulnerable, even though she her power is so magnificent. And we see her so strong and um, kind of demonic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but th we saw her so vulnerable at points in this arc, which was, I guess, a high and a low because more um, character development. Yeah. Um, Another vulnerable moment was when we saw Chopper's intense yeah. monster form. He has no control over that, but... Um, like Chopper was out here. Yeah. He out here. Yeah. He was like, oh, this is kind of scary sounding. <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, not as scary as the air door for you, but... The air door. <laughs> nightmares about that. So, let's start to work our way through the arc. So, what would you think about the beginning? Kind of storming Annie's lobby when everybody showed up. You know, Luffy, you know, running into who you run into. Your boy Yokozuna, since, you know, you, she's a frog girl. She loves frogs, so. I love this. I love that this is how we opened. This was the grand entrance into Annie's lobby. And of course, would it really be an entrance without Luffy being Luffy and going ahead of everybody? I thought it was so... You should never have a plan with Luffy, ever. No, you shouldn't. It never, it never goes to plan. But it was so, for lack of a better term, badass when he just stormed through thousands of Marines um, and then following suit behind him, um, every everyone else played such an important role into getting into the island. Yeah. Um, I loved it. It was, it was really well thought out. We got to meet the Giants, um, and then they played a further role into it. I'm trying to think the... Because at every gate, there was someone more powerful. Yeah. Um, but it was really well thought out. I mean, they basically separated into groups, and they all kind of just went through with storming. You had Luffy fighting all this, all these Marines just going all over the place, kind of yeah. being the distraction. And then we had the rest of the crew besides uh, Soge King on these dinosaurs, and you had the whole drama with the dinosaurs getting hurt. And then, like, and then we find out, so I thought Soge King was just kind of left behind accidentally. Um, no, sorry, not accidentally. was just kind of left behind purposely. But then we find out that he actually was left behind just, accidentally. He, just, he, he forgot to get on the, the what do you call them, sea monsters? Sea yeah. monsters. It was, it was really cool. This is where I got really, really into it and wanted to keep watching. Yeah. I, was, I was so into it. And then um, I'm trying to think of other important parts of this i mean it really is just fighting a whole bunch of grunts yeah it's like oh and also the whole time there was um this was funny uh, the comedic breaks always uh <laughs> with monster lady with the frog just ev everyone had and the, the girl and the, the rabbit everyone had yeah. like little comedic breaks in there um but the funniest part about the storming was the the marines who were contacting um Spandex. Spandum. <laughs> I'm gonna spandex. call them spandex because that's a, a spandum. I have to come up with silly things in my brain to remember their names, and spandex was what I used to remember him. Um, spandex was contacting them, the the marine guys, getting a report of what was going on, and it like cut off or something. Every time, yeah, they, and, they couldn't get the right number. And he was like, "Oh, Luffy only defeated five marines," and and then. So wait, it was like 5,000 of us. He was sadly mistaken, which was this funny. This dude's bugging out over here. We need help. Yeah, it was. And then his his snail was disconnected the whole time. So every time they're trying to give him an updated report saying, hey, they're getting closer and closer, right. he didn't know. All right. 
So storming in, mm-hmm. we get our we get our first fight, and Ooh. then we get we get something that you was just confused about. What the hell is going on? So Luffy versus Bluno. Yeah. AKA. Donan. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just <laughs> dumb man. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on this fight? Mm. It was fire. This is where we really got to see Luffy's. Well, starting to see Luffy's true potential because there's so many. I have a feeling there's gonna be so many more gears after this. Um, but first, before before he even went into gear second, first we got to see Luffy's ability to just kind of observe martial arts or yeah. Rogushiki. Um, he was just observing the CP9 doing these certain moves, and he used that to kind of predict what was going to happen and and move quicker than them basically yeah. and then he also used that to strengthen himself and his body to go into gear second um he's smart he does these things where he like he sees somebody do something he thinks of an idea yeah like, whether it be like a now he's always found a way to be resourceful and mm-hmm. yeah, resourceful is a good word for it it was yeah this is where you, you really got to see his true potential um and the the interesting thing is he he said to Bluno that he's doing this so he doesn't lose his friend. So I think there's 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 definitely a deeper thing behind why he's doing it. I don't know if I mean hopefully we find out more about Luffy's backstory. We're starting to find little bits out here and there yeah. um, in the next arc, but I, I want to know if he went through like tremendous loss and so he's afraid to lose people, or if he really is just such a loyal person that he'll do anything for his friends. Yeah. So that's interesting, but um, yeah, a, it was it was really cool. He's an interesting character. He seems so simple, but then there's certain moments you like. He seems so childish. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> he seems so childish at half the time, most of the time. Um, but then there is these certain points where it's like, huh? I'm wondering the, what's what's underlying there. <laughs> he's like, but gosh. we get to as viewers, we get to see some really cool things. Yeah. So, so what do you think about uh, Gear Two? I was confused as to how. how. Um, he he just started like vibrating make sure I'm not confused yeah gear 3 was uh, gear 2 yeah is when he started vibrating and just became really red and steamy and fast you we I kind of forget not gonna lie he explains it when he's fighting Lucci can you remind me of what exactly Uh, is going on in his body um there he said something is vibrating he's like pumping the blood a little Mm -hmm. bit like faster in his body I guess um, that's like the best way to explain it. So that's like he does that because it's rubber, and then like he's able to like pump his blood faster. I guess it's put your adrenaline for mm-hmm. the most part, and then you know that'll move, help you move faster. I guess. And then what's scary about it, and we even learn more about it later on, is his body has some bad side effects afterwards. So he becomes a little bit weaker. But of course, Luffy being Luffy, after he after he defeats Bluno, he pulls out two big drumsticks of meat, and he is fine after that. So. Yeah. So you like you like gear two. You like the I like concept. gear two. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm excited for more because uh, soon after we learn about gear three, and so I can imagine there's gonna be way more gears in the future. What do you think about gear three? Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> really cool, and then hilarious afterwards. My son, he's turned. My son turned it small. You was so you was like. Is this, is this happening? Because. Again, watching the anime, so at the end, at, for the outro song, there are these little straw hats, and I was wondering why they turn, the anime people turn them into little people, but I think it's because of Gear 3, I'm assuming? Nah, they were just being cute. Oh. Well, it's the same style, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I was like, I don't look that deep into it. It's a deep story. <laughs> but, <laughs> alright, so, that fight's done. Luffy wins, handles that, you know. Bluno didn't really stand a chance. He was shocked the whole time. We then... I loved watching Spandex's reaction to seeing Bluno down. He was like, he was so confused oh, by yeah. it. I mean, Spandex is just, he's not, nobody likes him. Nobody likes him. He's the worst. I think he's the most, I, I have a, had opinions about past villains and... <laughs> Somehow you keep finding somebody you hate more? Yes. He's heartless. Yeah. I mean, that's because when you see what he does to a, to Robin kind of throughout the arc, you kind of the amount like, of times that he called her the B word. <laughs> I want I wanted to uh, mm. end it. So speaking of Robin, yeah. Robin's backstory. 
Oh, how, where do we even begin with this? It's it's heartbreaking. This girl, when she was younger, so the backstory is mainly focused on when she was eight years old. On uh, what's the island's name? Ohana. Ohana, thank you. Um, and the island was known. Wait, Ohana means family. Got it. There we go. Um, the island was known for um, historians and archaeology, and um, there was a secret little group of scholars uh, studying the Void Century, and all Nico Robin wanted to do was learn more about it because she thought that would bring her closer to her mom. Her mom was a really, really badass scholar who went in search of poneglyphs and the Void Century, and um, basically she and her crew at the time, or group of scholars that she was with got um, caught by the Marines. And they basically sabotaged them, I think. But Nico yeah. Robin's mom got away. Um, so then then we meet Saul, who we then find out was friends with Nico Robin's mom, who was a former Marine. He has the D in his name. Who has a D? I, I have so many questions about the D. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> pause. <laughs> um... So many questions about the D in the name. <laughs> um, but we'll get into that at some point. But, yes, yeah, so we found out he does have the D in his name, which brings so many other questions. Um, but Nico Robin, she so her mom left her. She was left with her aunt and uncle. Yeah, who gave her the Cinderella treatment. Yeah, I was about to say, Cinderella was basically who she became. Um, but what kept her motivated was the chance of seeing her mom again and studying and becoming a scholar to study the, the void century. And somehow this little genius was also able to teach herself how to read poneglyphs, which we find out during this arc is so, so, so against the law. And you also find, uh, this, I'm really excited about this because I'm, I'm so curious about the history of this world. Um, what is the void century? And we're getting so close to it. I feel maybe not. Do you think the government is hiding something? Yes, I think the the because we find out in this arc that the world government was created after the Void Century. That's what the scholars found out, and that's what the head scholar I forgot his name. I loved him. Clover, I think. Something. Yeah, clever. he basically goes on this whole before he dies or gets shot and he well then dies I guess. Yeah. But don't show it. Um, goes on this whole thing talking to the world government people. That um, that he thinks that the government has something to do with the void century and they're hiding something and yeah, so I'm really curious to find that out because we don't we don't find it out too much. But Nico Robin will be our key to that. So yeah, her her backstory was something else. But I have a big question: when and where and how did she get a devil fruit? Because they did not go into that at all. Yeah, I'll say. So she, we know she did it or ate it before she was eight years old, but was her mom there? Was she not? I'm so curious about it. Yeah, her mom dipped on her when she was two, so. Yeah. Also, like, damn, the mom situation is crazy. It is crazy, like, when she was, like, seeing her for the first time. Yeah. And yeah. She, she was trying so hard to, because the whole island, the, the group of scholars and the mom all and Saul, all they wanted to do was protect Nico Robin, but all Nico Robin wanted was her mom. Yeah. And she, she just wanted her true family. Yeah. Because then the, the relationship with her and Saul was like really something like, it's crazy because it really happened so quick. It's not like the backstories are like, yeah, it wasn't too long, long, but it was enough. But you like, it's like impactful, super quick. You're like, oh my god, this yeah. is all. I've, I've seen them talk for like three minutes, and I'm like, you guys are the best people to, together. I, I love Saul. Again, he was a marine turned good. Basically, he he fought for true justice, and he he sensed good in Nico Robin's mom. Um, he doesn't think he didn't think that the scholars should be punished for just learning about history, which is why everyone really, the scholars really think that they're hiding something, the world government, because why are you fighting so hard that you're going to bust or call a whole island just to hide yeah. the void century and the poneglyphs and everything, so. It's crazy, because it makes you, it's it's so hard to find any faction in the story completely right, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, whether you're a pirate, you know that there's good and bad pirates, same thing with, like, the Marines, so, like, you don't even know sometimes who you should be, like, rooting for, because yeah. you can't even be like, oh, yeah, I hate all the Marines, you could, it's very easy, because the short answer the main characters yeah but like moments like when you see Saul or things that Aokiji does you're like I love Aokiji he 
I, I have some theories about Aokiji. Mm. If we want to get into theory quick. So, I loved his part in Nico Robin's backstory, which we had some foreshadowing to already in, um... Long Ring. Was it Long? Yeah, yeah the long end ring. of Long Ring, Long Land. Yeah, before they left. Um, we had a little bit of foreshadowing because he knew something that nobody else knew. Yeah. Nico Robin was afraid when she saw him, but now we know why, because she had a flashback to when she was eight. So Aokiji let Robin get off the island during the Buster Call. Yeah. So that's when we saw, and it's because, maybe, um, well we know he was close with Saul when he was a Marine, but he killed him, um, or froze him, and Saul wished, hey, like, before he was frozen, like, keep this girl safe, basically. Yeah. And so Aokiji let her off the island. And then, um... Saul's a real one. Saul's a real one. And then there there are some other things in the next arc, which I won't get into, but I don't know, Aokiji doesn't seem bad. And maybe I should say this theory in the next arc because of his appearance in yeah. the next arc. Next video, next video. So pause on that, next video. about my theory on Aokiji. Yeah, we'll just uh, finish off this part of this, uh, the video with a daddy she 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 she, there you go. Yep. <laughs> oh, Sal. <laughs> and I also just love that they tied, that Oda tied in another giant. Yeah, you love you some giants. Love me some giants. Love me some giants. It's cool because they just keep popping up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're so somehow connected. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. So, a little bit more Robin stuff going on. Frankie and Robin. I love you. You, you I mentioned were a little it. giddy. A, little, a lot of giddy throughout watching this the whole time. I love this duo. Because they've both gone through, because we got Frankie's backstory in the previous arc. They both have gone through some serious loss growing up yeah. and um, some serious transformation as people um, so I think they're just such a great duo because they empathize with each other they, they get each other in my opinion um, what's the term shipping them so yeah yeah you going with Robin yes team Robin I am <laughs> they're cool I, I, re I really enjoyed them yeah because Frankie's so crazy and Robin's so Robin's also kind of crazy. She's, she's demonic a little bit. She's a little crazy because she be saying some crazy. shit sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love them together. They make a really good team. So, so from there, we get into uh, the shooting down of the flag mm. and Robin screaming that she wants to live. These moments. <sighs> these moments are one of the historic moments in the series that people always think of. So yeah. how do you feel about this? This was so symbolic of just like... We're n number one. They're doing it for their greater good. They know the world government is effed up in so many ways. But even more so in Luffy's heart, he was doing it for his friend. Um, and this is this is the moment where because the the main reason why Robin was saying she wanted to die is because, of course, she wanted to protect the Straw Hats, but more so because she was so afraid that they were going to end up betraying her, like basically everybody else in her life. Um, so this was the moment when Luffy was like, uh, okay, sure, you want to die, but let us save you first and then tell us how you feel, basically. Yeah. And um, then they shot the flag, and this is when she realized she wanted to live. And this is the moment she realized they're not going to betray her. Like, they're the real one. So it was it was so powerful. And also, like, F the government, basically, is what they were saying. <laughs> so it was it was. Cool. She's like, I feel them. She's yeah. like, shoot down that flag. It was, it was really cool. Your boy Soge King. See, you come through. Mm -hmm. How do, you, do you have anything to say about the uh, your TikTok uh, Soga King debacle? The amount of gaslighting the internet does? <laughs> oh my god. It's fine. <laughs> He's killing you. They're two different people. It's more frustrating because everybody who was gaslighting me knows in the next arc he reveals himself fully. Um, uh, did he? Yes. He took his mask off to talk to Luffy. Hey, this is Usopp. Like, yeah. uh, we saw him take it. Uh, well, Luffy said that they left so We're not out. getting into this again. <laughs> I was already gaslit by people I don't even know. All right, fine. So we'll move on. We'll move on. So let's knock this out. What's your thoughts on uh, Luchi and his backstory? Oof. I mean, he was basically raised... I mean, a part of me feels bad for him because I'm sure he doesn't know anything better because he was raised and brainwashed basically by the government to be an assassin, a heartless assassin. Yeah. Um, that, Absolute savage. Yes. And 
I, he has no personality other than to assassinate. And you, I saw, we mainly saw that, not even with his battle against Luffy, but it was mainly in what he did as a child to that village. Yeah. That and was. Pirates and like, just everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just smoked everybody. He said, well, if you're too weak to defend yourself, so you should probably die. Yeah, that was different. Different energy. Absolute, yeah. Absolute. He's, he's absolute. He's heartless. So, let's get into our straw hat fights. Woo. Let's get into our pairing. So, the first one we have up is Chopper versus Kodori. Yeah, again, I thought they were such perfect pairings. And even, like, the the little pairings that started but then swapped. So, originally it was Sanji versus Soap Lady. and <laughs> Khalifa. Khalifa, sorry. Um... But then that's when we got to see a different side of Sanji and his vulnerability. So even that was a, a meaningful pairing. Or Nami against Heo Guy. Yeah. That was a meaningful pairing. So even before we got with like the final pairs, those pairings still got us to understand a little bit more of the Straw Hats vulnerability. Um, so yes, yeah, starting with Chopper and... Oh, that's his name. The hair person is Kumadori. Yeah. Okay, so it was funny... And kind of really cool, actually. Some the main parts were after Kumadori came out of the refrigerator. Yeah. Um, so Chopper was smart, locked Kumadori in the refrigerator. Then Kumadori came out, and they um, transformed their body. And something that I kind of like look in, looked into a little bit because I thought, I thought it was so cool was the biofeedback, um, which is where Kumadori was able to. Um, control every single part of the body function so that's why the hair was being able to move um chopper was fascinated by that and then chopper turned to this to this monster um so i i i'm hoping i don't i don't i'm not really sure because i don't know how biofeedback could have just been a little small detail that's kind of irrelevant but i'm hoping chopper gets so fascinated by it and because Chopper can't control himself when he turns into this monster. I'm hoping he like looks into biofeedback a little bit because of he, his doctor and medical side. Yeah. Um, but basically, so biofeedback is when you train your body to control like your hair, everything. So anyway, I was really fascinated by that. But more so, Chopper became a monster. He ate the rumble, 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 rumble ball for the third time. And he already knew the side effects because it happened to him once before. Because yeah. the second time, he kind of loses he doesn't know what he's going to transform into. into. Yeah, and the so, third time he just turns into it. Yeah, because he was just like, he had, he had basically his, his grow up session in his brain. He was mm. just like, nah, everybody out here risking it all. I got to risk it all. Yeah, and so he, he risked it all and... That shit was insane. Yeah. That shit was, I was like not expecting that. So I'm hoping for Chopper, he like studies biofeedback or something in the future and is able to control this side of him. But it was cool. I like that. All right. So we get done with that fight. You already kind of spoke about the Sanji and Khalifa part of it all. Oh, yeah. Where, like, you didn't even know what exactly her powers was going on, what was going on at first. And it was, yes. So we get into Nami versus Khalifa. You yeah. were kind of, like, you seemed a little, like, over it at first. Because she was in the tub and everything. I was just confused. Very confused. Mm. My hopes are... I. I want Sanji to fight a fair fight with anybody. <laughs> you want to, what do you want to say? Because uh, I, I also I have, I respect that he's not going to hit a woman, but at the same time, it's like, mm, boy, he just turned you into a bar of soap. Like, <laughs> um, so I'm curious to know if he would ever, if Nami was getting her booty whipped, like, would he step in and fight for Nami someday? Um. Maybe. That's my question about this. But anyway, because he basically gave up this fight and then Nami had to risk her life. Yeah. So it was kind of like, mm, where's your loyalty? But whatever. Um, so yeah, not we got to see Nami's smart thinking in this part. I, To be honest, this was might have been my least favorite fight. <laughs> yeah. It was It was. Silly. It was a, yeah, it was just a really interesting devil fruit. <laughs> So, I, I don't have many thoughts on it. <laughs> you were just like, Nami, if that's what it does, okay. Nami turned silky smooth. It was also just like a... Uh, 
little stereotypical, just like, oh, you're more beautiful now because your skin, your skin is perfect. Like, it was just, I don't know. I, I didn't Sounds like you won't say this fight is trash. No, not trash. I like, because okay. I like the creativity behind the devil fruit. So it's mid. I love Oda for that. It's just the, yeah. It's mid. Maybe. But Nami, you know, showed herself and smart thinking. We got to see some of her strengths in this fight. So there's pros and cons to everything, I guess. All right. So, that fight gets handled how it gets handled, you know, Nami's kind of thunderbolting and yeah. resourcefulness and just all the other chaos going on in the building because uh, we didn't even get to talk about in the beginning <laughs> running into the building how <laughs> Zoro just kept running the wrong way. Oh my goodness, this is, this is what I mean with the, the perfect timed comedic breaks <laughs> where you most need them. Um, things start getting intense and then Zoro is running in the wrong direction, even though everyone's yelling his name. And, um, and then Sanji just kind of burst ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, bro. Yeah. So, next fight. We got Frankie versus Fukuro. This was another fight that wasn't my favorite, because for some reason, Fukuro just really bothered me. <laughs> I don't know why. I just wanted him to be defeated. Just, just because get this dude out of here. <laughs> I th he was just kind of annoying. No one likes snitches. Um... <laughs> But also he just, I think it was just the, the little like boasting and like the jumping around. Yee -hee! Like it was just, he, he really bothered me and he didn't seem that strong. I thought he was, I think he was the weakest when they told us the power levels. Yeah. So I was like, all right, just get it over with. But then they ended up in the water. There were some complications, but of course Frankie fe defeated him. This is another one I don't have that much of an opinion on because I, he just really bothered me. Yeah. This was a fight where I was just like, all right. <laughs> what do you think about Frankie and his cola situation? Oh, that another comedic break. Um, when Chopper kept on accidentally giving him the, just everything else, <laughs> the, ve the vegetable uh, juice or whatever. Yeah, it was, whole it was really funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I'm I'm only nervous about the cola situation. Like, what if they're in, are in somewhere where they don't have cola? Um, but again, creative thoughts behind it. I love it. Um, it's funny. So we'll get past this fight. Let's uh, yeah. let's get into uh, Soge King and Zoro versus Kaku and Jabra. Some uh, a lot of devil fruit stuff going on here. Yeah, <laughs> and also more comedic breaks because of the draft situation. We had no idea he was going to turn into giraffe. <laughs> it was so, and they were smoking his boots. Did you like the giraffe? I yeah. did actually. I love giraffes. <laughs> I love giraffes. They was killing him. They was they was cutting they was cutting his ass. Yeah, and then the. Jabra and Koku reminded me of, with their bickering. Yeah. They, were, they reminded me Kaku, of. Kaku, yeah. Kaku, sorry. They reminded me of um, Zoro and Sanji yeah. a lot. I was like, oh wow, this looks familiar. But I'm not gonna lie. So, this was another one of those pairings that didn't stick the whole time because um, Usopp technically wasn't supposed to be there. But I got annoyed with Usopp again because I was like, how? Like, you're not even a part of this fight, really. And how, how are you messing this up? <laughs> how, are you messing how did you get the handcuffs on Zoro? I got, I got frustrated because I was ready for Zoro to fight them both, basically. Um, but whatever. It, was, it ended up being kind of funny. And I kind of think Zoro used this because we find out later on. I don't want to ruin the next, next arc. But um, Zoro was frustrated with Usopp that with the whole leaving the straw hat yeah. situation and we saw that from the beginning um so i feel like Z he was able to kind of take out his frustrations by turning him into a sword yeah. well, and then what was funny is him trying to chop off his wrist and he was like what zoro be ready to just be like when well, he wanted to chop the, off his yeah, leg and this, this is this is consistent yeah this but this is normal that's for your him. boy mm -hmm. that is your boy since you have him as your phone case now is my boy. you want to show the, show the people your phone case look at that She's like, I, don't, I haven't even seen them in that clothes yet, but... <laughs> True. Yeah, it is what it is. So, we get done with, you know, this temporary appearance because all the other chaos kind of leads for everything to switch around. Yeah, and all meanwhile, the half the building is falling because <laughs> of the, the draft yeah. strike or something. Yeah, the... Lots going on. Lots of chaos going on, but that's what keeps you on your toes this entire time. Even with the fights that I wasn't the biggest fan of, they kept on panning out to other fights. So there was a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, because with all this going on, they're basically fighting all of CP9 so that they can get the keys to Robin's handcuffs. Mm -hmm. So basically everybody's collecting keys from different people. So by the time, like, halfway through the 
Zoro and Soge King and Kaku and Jabra situation. Nami has already won. Chopper is rampaging through the building, basically tearing everything down. Yeah. Frankie is now becoming useful and everything like that. And, you know, they then have Soge King split up and then it ends up being Sanji coming back into play against Jabra mm-hmm. and Zoro but versus also, Kaku. Frankie... It was a Frankie and Nami had to find the key to get Usopp and Zoro. Yeah. Because originally it was Chopper's job, but then Chopper turned into the monster Chopper. Yeah. So then they had to go find the key for yeah. Zoro and Usopp. Um, so let's uh, let's finish out the Zoro versus Kaku fight. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, it was kind of funny um, because. Kaku didn't have any because this is a new devil fruit for him, so he had he had no power over anything that was happening. He was like, "Yeah, watch this," and Zora was like, "Okay." What are you doing, bro? <laughs> um, so it, yeah, it was it was kind of funny, but it, he put up a good fight because they both are swordsmen, basically. Um, Kaku has four swords because he counts his feet as them, right? Yeah. Um, and then. Zoro with three. And then we got to see that really cool side of Zoro. Oh, I almost forgot about this. Where he turns into some devil. But it's because of the sword, right? It's just a technique, yes. It, that be, that was really cool. That's one cool. thing you get used to. You get, you get into a new arc, you're going to see some new techniques. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they keep learning more and more about their own powers. And um, <laughs> another nap, another power, basically, for Zoro. Yeah. But, yeah, it was. It, we got another to see. Another nap, another power. <laughs> we, we got to see that side. Um, so I, I honestly think for that fight, the most, the biggest honorable mention was that power. I don't forget what he called it. What the giraffe fruit? No, 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 the um, the devil thing, Zoro. Oh, it's like a. It, I there was, was a name. Like six pass Ashura or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Like and at deep. one point, oh, he had nine arms. Yeah, you saw it at least. They were, yeah, it was so cool. <laughs> um, so that was an honorable mention for that fight. Another honorable mention was just the, the constant Zoro being like. What are you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're fighting. Yeah. What are, what are we doing? Yeah. So, that fight ends. You know, your boy Zoro has his badass moment taking him out. And then we get Sanji, Sanji. versus Jabra. Yeah. This was, it was a, this was a good fight, too. Um, the biggest... My favorite part was... I feel like Sanji's just always very slick and smart. Um, so, uh, Jabra was trying to trick him... With the he's trying to act like some little Red Riding Hood shit. Yeah, he's always trying to tell these lies and stories. Yeah, so he's basically like Nico Robin is my sister. <laughs> we were on this whole a, a whole like fake backstory. We please were on a, we were on a beach and she was taken. So yes, please go save her. And then Sanji took the key and basically fought him off um, because he didn't fall for the trick. He was like, "Who do you think I am?" <laughs> uh, that was funny. Yeah, again, all the pairings were just so perfect because they all. All of the straw hats, I feel like, truly outsmarted their opponents, even though these are the most powerful people that we know of at the moment. Um, what do you think about Sanji's uh, Diablo Jambe attack? That was, Yeah, another power that we get to see. It was cool. How do you think that works? I have no idea. It's all a mystery to me. I don't know. How how does Zoro grow three arms? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. You're just like, it's, hap- it's one piece. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah, my man's whole foot catches on fire. You're just like, yeah, you know what? Science. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Science. Yeah, I have no theories as to why their bodies do this. Yeah. It's, yeah, one piece, right? Yeah. Seen where the things, like the, the doohies do the hypnotism, so. Yeah. So, last fight of the group. We got Luffy versus Luchi. What do you think about this fight? Yeah, I was shaking on my boots. Because Luchi kind of already defeated Luffy. Yeah. Um, at, on Water 7. Obviously not defeated, defeated, but basically did. Got him out of there. Um, so I was shaking in my boots, but I was excited the whole time as well. Because now we know Luffy has these different gears. And the whole time I was like, go to gear second, go to gear second. Um, but I'm glad he didn't too soon because now we know the toll it takes on his body. Yeah. Um, but I was nervous because Luchi could see that the gear second really affected his body. Um, so he kind of wanted to tire him out as much as he could. Um, but then Luffy kind of noted that Luchi's body was also getting affected by, um, 
Yeah, the strikes he was taking when he was in Gear Second. Because at one point, Luffy punches Luchi through the whole building. Yeah. With gear, like a Gear Third punch, his whole tower just falls down. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they were, they were both getting weaker and weaker, and Luchi was trying to like psych Luffy out a little bit by saying like you're shortening your lifespan by doing this to your body. Um. So that was kind of nerve wracking as well. And I don't. I'm wondering if we're gonna get more into that as we go on, or if Luffy finds a way to overcome this lifespan. Oh, yeah. Do you, um, think, do you think this is one of Luffy's better fights in the series? Absolutely. It was the longest one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the longest one, but yeah, I mean, we got to see him use both gears in one fight. I mean, this is the first time we introduced the gears, but we got him to, we got to see both gears. And then this was the first time I think we've ever seen both Luffy and his opponent get basically knocked down yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So it was a very almost, almost equal fight. Like, I mean, that kind of, well, yeah, no, it didn't happen that much. It didn't really happen with Crocodile since he saved Robin. Mm -hmm. After he beat Crocodile, so I guess, yeah, they, this is like... The they were both knocked down, both both immobile, yeah. just laying there, so... So, uh, you like Luke? Like, so you like Luke as a villain, or you just hate him? He's a good villain. Yeah. He's a good villain, yeah. I don't hate him as much as Spandex. <laughs> It's crazy. The, lead, the the less powerful villains is the ones that you don't that you end up hating just more. Arrogant. Him. Who else? Wapple from uh, Drum Island. Mm -hmm. Foxy. Yeah, Foxy was just Foxy. Because <laughs> Foxy at the end turned out like a good game friend. Like Foxy. <laughs> you like you know what? Yeah, Foxy was Foxy. Yeah, fix Foxy. Out. Compared to Spandex, <laughs> no, Spandex is just arrogant. And at least Lucci was kind of humble. Like he kind of just like not humble. Oh yeah, kind of humble. He just walked around like. Not worried about anything because he knew he was. But that's not humble. That's that's like that's B, he is that's humble. B, that's BDE because he wasn't being like um, what's his. He name? wasn't bombastic. Yes. Um, just, every time I hear that word, I just sing the song in my head. <laughs> Call me Mr. Bombastic. Um, he wasn't like uh, what's his name, Wolf. Wolf. The wolf guy. Oh, Jabra. I think yeah, he was Jabra was. Arrogant, yeah, and constantly tried to boast about his you powers. You like that he was just like Luchi was just kind of like, like bro, I'm, I'm gonna kill you when I kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we get through all the fights. You know, we're we're starting to reach our final parts in the arc. So you've already basically told us how much you hate Spandam. Mm -hmm. So we're not even gonna ask your thoughts on Spandam and then the whole fact that his connection with his dad being the one that did the Buster call. It just poor Robin. That that's all I thought about. Like this poor. Woman is getting triggered so bad just by being in his presence when she realizes the connection. So, like, the bust of call overall, what do you think about it? Because not, not only did you see it happen in the backstory, but now you're watching it currently happening. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Well, okay, so I felt awful again that Robin was getting triggered even just by the word. And rightfully so, because her whole... It's not like you about to say it was overhyped. It was. <laughs> but it ruined a whole island, so I get it. They had no control over it. But like... You thought you thought it was about to be something. You thought it was going to be like a nuke? Oh, um, I guess, maybe. But I, I just like I had a, I just knew that the Straw Hats were going to be able to get out of it. Because there's so much story left. No, not even... I mean, yeah. But also, like, they were barely touched. But also just because... Especially as it was going on... Um, as we were going through Annie's lobby, I was like, if they are able to defeat a whole island of government people, <laughs> why do we think that a buster call is going to defeat them? You know, so I, I, the whole time I was a little yeah. skeptical that it was actually going to affect them when it did happen. Um, well, look at it more like this way. Just think about how terrifying it is for any country now. If you ever hear Buster Call happen again, and you know what's going to happen to this, yeah, the island itself that like there, there's no, <laughs> there's no coming back from a Buster Call. The island is gone, basically. Yeah. So that that's scary as heck. I just need the straw hats. We're gonna get out. <laughs> so, I had no doubt that they were gonna be able to get out. So from this point, you know, what were your thoughts when uh, Robin was saved? How'd you feel I... after all the spandex uh, torture? And disrespect. Yeah, so there there are a few big events that happened in this part. So I love that Frankie is the one that was the first one there. Adored that. Um, Hashtag Robin. Yeah. And then, of course, the Usopp with the important role that he played as well. Sorry, Silk King. Um, and then the most empowering moment for me was when Robin finally got her hands on spandex. 
I was just like, yeah, break his neck, break his neck. You know how many times he called you? Put as many hands on him <laughs> as he called you that word. I Put all the hands. It was, it was, it was fire. Um, but again, I was really happy that Frankie was the one that got there first. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. Your boy Frankie. And it was just like, I could just imagine the way she felt. It's just such a relief yeah. of just, they're here. And she knew they were coming. Yeah. Because with all that going on, because like, even though we have, we're here, we're like fighting all these people, we're damn near a whole different part of the island because Oda gives us basically a map of what where we are in locations. We still in the front, there's still shit going on. Yeah. Right? And then we got a, we got a couple MVPs who are unnamed, role, great role players is what we like to call them. The Frankie family and the Gale La. Yeah. These dudes chilling in the back. You got Kokoro over here. You got all types of other stuff going on. Well, that's that's the beautiful part about this. This whole arc is the side characters played probably the biggest roles of getting them there. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't have gotten to Robin without little girl. Um, names. Chimney. Chimney. Yeah. Because yeah. she she was just being a little new. Well, no, she fell down she the trap door. She was everywhere she shouldn't be. Yeah, but th that's how they, they made it. Um, they made it, the Straw Hats made it out of the tunnel because of Monster Woman, mm -hmm. with Monster Lady with the... Oh, she, she's, she's the mermaid. She's the mermaid. <laughs> she's a whole mermaid. Um, that was so cool. So with, without these people, they, they wouldn't have made it. Yeah. Um, Nakama. Nakama OD. Yeah. Yeah. So like, how do you feel about when uh, Frankie family and Gali La was almost dead? I was sad at first, mainly for Frankie, um, because he was trying to just kind of like hide it. Um, but I also knew he was proud and just because at first he didn't even know that they were there for him until they he found out they were. So I was a little sad, but there was a part of me that was like somebody had to make it. I don't I don't know. I didn't know if it was truly. You know Goodbye. how I feel about deaths already in one piece. You're always like, yeah, yeah I believe it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, from this point, you know, we we started to reach the end of the arc, right? Mm -hmm. You have Robin free, you have Frankie there, and then everybody's kind of like waiting for Luffy to get done with their fight while they're trying to hold up the Marines. Zoro loses a sword. Um, oh, word. Because the rust, the rust dude t destroys one of Zoro's yeah, swords. Yeah, that's, that's a little um, scary to see the different powers the Marines have. Yeah. Some of the Marines have different devil fruits. And that was just a, a regular So bystander. random, yeah. Like Rando just pulled up. But once again, Usopp has to make an appearance because Soga King dipped and then had to like scream at Luffy because he kept hearing voices. Yeah. Kept hearing these voices and then we get this moment. Well, it wasn't just Usopp hearing voices. Chopper heard them too. Yeah. They all started hearing them. But Usopp had to be the one to scream to Luffy. Yeah. So it'll be like, yo, just jump. Mm -hmm. And then the Mary shows up. Oh my God, I know. You knew too. You, in your brain, you was like... Nah, the Mary gonna show back up. You you was calling it the whole time. I did. You just didn't know how, obviously. When I when I heard the voice, the first thing I said, I was like, "That's the Mary." Um, yeah, that was that was pure magic. I didn't know the whole backstory, which was kind of cool, yeah. which we find out I think in the next arc. But um, it was magic, actual magic. Oh wait, no, we do find out in this because um, it's the end of the. What do you mean? I'm I'm confusing with the Annie's lobby and the current. Pulse Annie's. Mm hmm Yeah. And he's lobby in the sorry post. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's pure magic. Um, Go Mary comes back for the final time for them. She had to she knew that she was needed and she was. Yeah, because they would have been they was they was on the last rock, honestly. Yeah. Cause that Buster Gold was about to take them all out. Yeah. I only if it wasn't for Mary it would have had to have been Monster Lady. So <laughs> I mean, that is how they got through the pipe, right? Yeah. Because that's when they, they, everybody was confused. Sanji was so... That's honestly what I thought was originally going to happen, was she was somehow going to just find a random... A whale, no, find a, find a sea train. <laughs> I was like, like find a whale, oh yeah, something. back in the day, Tom and I made this emergency sea train in this tunnel here. Like, Yeah, you was like... How, you wouldn't thought the ship would have just showed it by itself. But then, yeah. But then but there then, she was. Because of... Uh, what you call Iceberg... Had ended up because the ship basically told Iceberg to fix it. And yeah. Send me there. Yeah. It's crazy moments. Ships have souls. I mean, you know, there's a faction of the One Piece community that believes that the Mary is just a ship, and that people shouldn't be crying over a ship. So, how'd you feel about the Mary being burned? So, for those people, 
I'm sorry. I don't know if you have a soul. I'm not a crier that much. I'm, I don't cry. I, I like to say I'm a robot. I know that's not true because obviously I feel my feels and I like feeling feels, but I don't cry that much. I don't like crying and I, I yeah. <laughs> when they, when the Go Mary was burned, this is the first time in this entire anime series that I cried. Yeah. The emotions finally hitting this. I think this is the, the first this time. This is the arc. This is the arc because yeah. even when I was going through it the first time, and it's kind of ridiculous, not ridiculous, but it's hard to tell somebody to get into this series and then you tell them, oh, but I didn't really feel it until episode 300 and so yeah this arc is what did it for me well water seven did it for me actually yeah, but maybe, but even then it's only still like in mm -hmm. 200s and something you know what i mean but i don't think i watched an arc back or episodes back to back to back to back as much as i did yeah. this one and it's not just because i was sick but it was just fast yeah, it was just like, i just wanted to know what was going to happen and in previous arcs you've seen me i'm like okay i'm done for tonight i need yeah, to take a break i had my fault <laughs> yeah i it, i didn't like i wasn't dying to see the next one but yeah. the, for this one i needed to see what was gonna happen yeah so how do you feel about the goodbye to mary it was so powerful and really sad i cried I cried a little bit yeah it's crazy you're like oh damn we actually lost a crewmate basically yeah because I think there was a thing back then when this arc came out that people, I think Oda may have said something like, oh, we're going to lose a crewmate. And I feel like people were waiting. Oh, it sometime, was right. oh, I, I'm not sure. Smart. I could be making that up. I mm. could be wrong, but he may have like said that in like an article while this arc was happening in real time, something like that. Um, like, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to lose a crewmate this year. Mm. He kind of did, though. He definitely a part did. of me thought they were going to like take a piece of her, like the head or something. The, the lamb, what is that, a lamb? Yeah. But they didn't. Yeah. All right, well, so we've reached the end. Wow. Well. We're doing good timing here, actually. Um, wow. Well. So, out of 10, oh. what are we giving Andy's Lobby? Yeah, this is this has got to be the 10 for me. This is the 10. Yeah. The first yeah. 10 out of 10. And I know, like, just from fandom, I, I know this is one of the top arcs for a lot of people. Um, but again, this is the first arc that I cried. This is the first arc that I was shaking in my boots to get to the next one. And I, the fastest arc I finished, which is why my brain's a little bit scrambled now because it's been kind of a long time since I finished it. But, um, yeah, I think I got to give it a 10. So let's... My first 10 of, as of yet. So one more question. We don't have this written down. So this is really spur of the moment that I'm doing to you. Mm. So let's see how you do this. You can just tap out too if you don't want to. You're going to make me rate them? No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I know you. I know you're not ready for that yet. You're not ready for that. Um, so, for somebody who's not in the One Piece, now, now that you're at this point versus the first time I asked you this, which is the first saga, three sentences, just three sentences. What are your selling points to sell One Piece to them? Mm -hmm. It could just be like what you love about it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The first thing that thought that popped in my head was Nakama. <laughs> <laughs> One word. <laughs> Nakama. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I feel like this is what I said the first time you asked me this. The And now I know the proper terminology for it too. Um, so I guess in literature world, it'd be plot development. Um, so if you want something with um, world building. Yeah. Um, with character development, uh, and then just finding true morals behind, behind it all, behind the world building, behind the development, um, and a lot, and a lot of these morals tie into Nakama, friendship. Um, another thing is just the, the kind of, the relation to life like colonization and mean governments and but in a fun and just exciting way yeah. um there's just there's so much more deep things behind one piece that meets than meets the eye <laughs> yeah that's kind of what it seems like you want to say like it's yeah. just just so like there's so I had, much I here had, i so had no idea no idea what i was getting into again i just thought it was silly little pirates doing yeah. silly little things. 
Um, it was it's geared towards adolescent boys, um, but it's really not. There's so much that I think anyone can pull out of One Piece that could relate to them or at least resonate with them in some type of way. Yeah. So. Like it's not. It's really not for kids. When you really look at all the themes that's in this, you're like. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the best way I feel like I could help you summarize everything you just said because you were just spitballing things. That was like, more than three lines. Yeah, you were a lot of sentences, but you were just like, there's a lot of, there's a lot here. There's a lot more to One Piece than I think people realize from mm. the jump. And a lot more other animes, honestly, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you. Like, for you, I think if you were to watch any other anime after this now, you are, you are now with the burden of now going through one piece and being like mm, yeah this didn't do it like one piece though yeah i so, can imagine that yeah so the bar set the bar set so 10 out of 10 for any slobby yep so let's uh let's get this done then we'll end the video here but before we end this video if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell to get notified for more content that i put out as well if you end up enjoying this review of the any slobby arc in one piece be sure to hit a little like and leave a comment and let us know your thoughts. So, on that note, y'all, enjoy your life. I'm feeling great and feel the vibe. I'm really grateful we alive. And I'm feeling great because lately I've been on the way to something great. And I'm feeling like as I create like every day and I'm on today.